The Air Force is working on a new toy. This may or may not be a game changer. The U.S. Air Force is developing a new non-lethal cruise missile, which officials say could knock out North Korean missiles. It's called the CHAMP, which stands for a Counter Electronics High Power Microwave Advanced Missile Project. The CHAMP system is a high-powered microwave weapon that can be delivered on an air-launched cruise missile from an American bomber. The CHAMP missiles are designed to fly at low altitudes into enemy airspace and send out strong electromagnetic impulses in order to jam enemy control and command systems. Cruise missiles fired by the enemy would then splash down in the ocean. The system is still in the development phase and also has drawbacks. Although non-lethal, the missile looks similar to the nuclear-capable variant and could be mistaken as an act of war if spotted by other countries. Another obstacle for the CHAMP system is that military equipment often has redundant wiring and insulation to protect from electronic attacks. So is this a game changer? Probably not. Keep watching for more Korea stories. Yikes! A crew on board a Cathay Pacific flight saw a North Korean missile blow up over the Sea of Japan last week. Cathay Pacific Flight CX-893 was en route to Hong Kong from San Francisco on November 29th when the crew saw the missile from their plane as they were passing over Japan. Those on board had a first row seat to watch the DPRK missile blow up and fall apart on re-entry. The crew immediately contacted Japanese air traffic control to report the incident. Cathay Pacific says it has no plans to alter its routes in the region. It's not like you really have to worry about the North Korean missiles anyway. It's the U.S. ones you need to watch out for. Pyongyang's launched its latest ballistic missile test last Wednesday despite international sanctions and warnings. Ooh, sanctions and warnings. North Korean defector's stomach full of nasty parasites. The contents of a recent North Korean defector's stomach paint a hopeless picture of what life is really like inside the hermit kingdom. The North Korean border guard was shot several times while fleeing across the demilitarized zone to South Korea last week. Medical staff treating the defector say they found numerous parasites inside his body. Several of these were removed from his digestive tract, including one 27-centimeter long roundworm. They were likely caused by farming practices in the north where human excrement is used for fertilizer due to a lack of chemical fertilizer. Known as night soil, this practice is notorious for spreading parasites and disease. And that god-awful practice was championed by this guy. And he's full of it. Very full. North Korea developing solid fuel missiles, maybe. If you believe North Korean news, it looks like Kim Jong-un has the country developing new solid fuel missiles. Photos released by North Korean state media appear to show new solid fuel missile designs. One of the missiles was labeled Puguksong-3, which could be the latest in its Polaris series. The Puguksong-3 could have a longer range as well as canister launching capabilities, which would make them easier to transport and harder to locate. A canister-based system would mean that North Korea could also fire the missiles via submarine. Solid fuel engines would allow for reduced launch times compared to liquid fuel missiles. Experts say it's more difficult to make out what type of design the other missile pictured was. Some speculated it was either a Hwasong-13 or Hwasong-11. What would a hydrogen bomb do to the Pacific Ocean? As the war of words between the United States and North Korea continues to escalate, Pyongyang hinted last week that it may test a hydrogen bomb in the Pacific Ocean. If a hydrogen bomb did hit the Pacific, it would detonate with a blinding flash while producing a massive mushroom cloud. The immediate fallout would depend on the height of detonation. The initial blast would instantly kill most fish and marine life in the blast area. The explosion would send radioactive particles flying through the air and into the water. Wind also has the potential to carry the particles hundreds of miles. The smoke created at the strike zone could potentially block out sunlight, hurting organisms that utilize photosynthesis. Radiation would lead to severe health problems for surrounding aquatic life. Humans could also be affected if radioactive fallout reaches land. Particles could contaminate air, water and soil.